use race as a wedge issue, to use black bodies as a prop in your campaigns, because I know when you say those words race, sometimes it makes people pay attention. And those folks who have pent up racial issues, this is something that they can embrace. I would ask you to be very careful about continuing to use this type of language in an attempt to rally your base. Again, there is a lot going on right now. When I was here about a month ago with freshmen, unexpectedly, the governor, the governor-elect at the time, he came in this chamber with the freshmen who were being trained and taught and, and talked about how we do things on the floor. And the first things that I recall him saying was that he, he had a strong prayer life and that he was praying for everybody. And so far, what I've seen from his day one activities is not someone who is a man of faith, not a Christian, but someone who wants to divide the commonwealth, someone wants, that wants to cause division in this commonwealth. I know the truth hurts. I don't want to make you cry like saying critical race theory, because I know it hurts your feelings. I just want to say. The House will come to order. The gentleman will continue in proper order. Thank you. Thank the gentleman you, will continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I, as I said before, the governor said he wanted to unite and not divide. His first day one orders were issuing mass mandates. And then a few days later, now recently, he said uh, teachers or parents should be reporting on a hotline uh, to try to separate us and divide us and cause parents to go at parents, teachers to go at teachers. It's very divisive. It's very sad. He said he had a day one agenda, ready for Virginia day one. The problem is he didn't have a day two or day three or day four plan. And so consequently, even the mass mandate that he said, even Attorney General Jason Mieris says he won't enforce that mass mandate. Speaking of Attorney General Jason Mieris, he said that he would introduce a bill or pass a law whereby common, where Commonwealth attorneys refused to pass to, uh, to prosecute a case, that he would allow the police, law enforcement sheriffs to go directly to the attorney general's office and bypass their locally elected Commonwealth attorneys. Problem with that is he forgot to talk to the Commonwealth attorneys who overwhelmingly opposed it. Every single Commonwealth attorney who stated a position was opposed to that position. And so he's now pulled back. Day one splashes, day two, day three, incompetence. Dangerously incompetent for political purposes only. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to implore us to stop using black people in critical race theory as a political tool and start governing. We're tired of it, it's getting frustrated, and we'd like to see the body move forward without using black folks as props in your, uh, in your uh, quest to, to retain power. Finally, Mr. Speaker, a few days ago, a colleague from a delegate from Virginia Beach, who also chairs education, was trolling my colleague from Portsmouth, the senator, and was saying that she, didn't, she was incorrect in her interpretation of the, the legality of the executive order on mass mandates. She's correct, and hopefully they'll be proven correct. But I would just advise us to stay focused on our work. The education chair has lots to do other than trolling the senator. She doesn't need me to protect her. She's a former shipfitter, the first female shipfitter in Portsmouth in Norfolk Naval Shipyard back in 1971. She's tough. But I just ask to focus on our jobs as we move forward, and let's get the work done here in the people's house, and not so much on how we continue to bring up what the governor has called and what you guys call yourself divisive concepts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.